Do you have an ATSV, CTSV sport, or XTSV sport? And when you shut down, you hear this sound. Yeah, well today I'm gonna tell you what that noise is and how to fix it. Up next. That sound you're hearing is the sound of your wastegate solenoids acting up. The wastegate solenoid is something that allows the car's computer to control vacuum pressure, which in turn controls the wastegates of the turbos. The wastegates are there to divert air, pressurized air, either into the engine as boost or away from the engine when the engine doesn't need boost. So if your wastegate solenoids are acting up, you may not be getting the right boost at the right times to your engine. So uh, some people have noticed that when their wastegate solenoids are bad, they're getting maybe low boost or inconsistent boost. But actually a lot of people that have this noise aren't having any boost problems yet at all. So no problem, right? Just go to the dealer and tell them to fix it. You have a warranty, right? Maybe not. There are a lot of dealers that are not replacing this. Uh, there's rumors that there's actual TSB from GM that says, hey, don't worry, this is normal. Don't fix it under warranty. Well, it can't be normal. If it was normal, it would have made that noise when it came out of the factory, right? Yeah, so if you can't convince your dealer to fix it, no problem, I got you covered. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can replace a wastegate solenoid. The price is only about $55 and it'll cost you about 20 minutes of time I'm gonna give you a detailed installation right now so you can do it yourself. Now to replace the wastegate solenoids, if you have an ATSV, it's a pretty easy job for you. Your wastegate solenoids are located right here under the engine cover. They're on there with just two nuts each and then three vacuum lines to pull off and replace, plus an electrical connector. You can almost figure it out yourself. But follow this how-to tutorial for more details. I'm gonna be doing it on my CTS V-Sport. On the CTS V-Sport, the wastegate solenoids are located on each side of the radiator. You can't see them because they're under the plastic shrouding. You can see one of them here on the left side in this notch, but the other one's definitely hidden. So today I'm gonna to show you how to remove those on my V-Sport. I don't really need wastegate solenoids, I'm just doing this how-to because a lot of people have had this problem. So I'll be removing them and reinstalling them again. Let's get to it. Here's your quick overview. First remove the plastic shrouding around the front of the engine, then loosen the clamps and remove the three vacuum lines connected to the wastegate solenoid. Remove the two 10 millimeter nuts and remove the electrical connector. Now you can just reverse the procedure and put the new one back in. Connect the electrical connector, mount the wastegate solenoid and tighten the 10 millimeter nuts. Put your three vacuum lines back on with the hose clamps and then put your plastic shroud back on and let's get to the details. For this installation, you'll need the following tools. The most important tools are 10 millimeter sockets like the short and a long one and a small ratchet to get into tight spaces. You may want an offset wrench like this in 10 millimeter, it could be helpful. You also want a uh, needle nose pliers, a flathead screwdriver, some gloves to protect your hands. You might want some tape and a marker so you can mark vacuum lines. And while you're under the engine bay, you may want to clean up. So I've got some all purpose cleaner, uh, a rag and a boar's hair bris bristle brush to clean up in there. To access the wastegate solenoids, we'll first need to remove this plastic shroud at the front of the engine bay. The shroud is held in by four retaining clips at the front and two on the sides. To remove the ones at the front, just lift the center piece up with the flathead screwdriver and this will give you access to unlock the lower retainer. If you're really good at this, you can gently lift up the center section to unlock it and then pull the whole thing out all at once. If they come apart, it's not really a big deal. You just put them back together again. Then on the sides of the car, near the headlights, there are barbed Christmas tree type retainers. These are a little harder to get out. They have a lot of little teeth that make it difficult to get it out. It helps to use uh, needle nose pliers and a way to pry it away from the fender. But don't pry against your fender, you could damage it. See what they look like? If you break one, no big deal, they're available at most auto parts stores. Then you need to release the hood seal. Uh, you might have clips, I had a broken one there, no big deal. And you only need to pull it back up to this line. 
Do the same on the driver's side, only up to the line. And now we can release the shroud. Just pull up from the center where the hood latch is and all the retaining clips will release. The ones on the sides closer to the headlights are a little more difficult, but they'll come out no problem. Now that we have the shroud off, we have access to the wastegate solenoids. Here's the one on the driver's side, and then here's the one on the passenger side. Let's start with the passenger side first. First you need to remove the vacuum lines. To do this, use your needle nose pliers, squeeze together the hose clamp, and slide it back away from the wastegate nipple. Then as you pull the vacuum connector off, it may help to pry at it gently with a flathead screwdriver. Now depending on how old your car is and the climate you live in, these may be brittle parts. The vacuum connectors are generally available at most auto parts stores, but please be careful with them. The top connector is a T-shape, the other two are 90 degree elbows, so it's not easy to mix them up, but on the driver's side they're all 90 degree elbows and it's easy to mix them up, so I suggest labeling them. Now that you've removed the three vacuum lines, it's time to remove the wastegate solenoid from its mounting position. You see there's two 10 millimeter nuts. So we'll use our small ratchet and a deep 10 millimeter socket to get at one of the nuts. Then we'll use a shallow one to get to the other. Use whatever works for you and is most convenient. Once you break loose the nuts, it'll be easier just to use your finger to spin them off. But be very careful, don't drop the nut into the engine bay, you may never ever get it back. So I suggest having a magnet handy to catch it, or just be really careful. If you do lose the nut, one will hold the wastegate solenoid on just fine, but I do suggest trying to find a replacement nut. Now that you have the two nuts off, you can gently pry away the wastegate solenoid from the studs that it's mounted on. I just use a screwdriver. It's just a very tight space, so it's difficult to get it to move. Once you have the wastegate solenoid free, you'll have more room to grab and release the electrical connector. Just press in the silver spring clip and pull the connector away from the solenoid. That's it. Now grab your new wastegate solenoid and it's time to install it. Simply reverse the procedure. First, clip on the electrical connector. Then position the wastegate solenoid back over the studs. Again, it's a little tight, so it'll take some maneuvering. Once you have it in place, you can take your 10 millimeter nuts and put them on again. Again, I ask you to be careful with those nuts, you may drop them. First just spin them on gently with your fingers until they're almost down to the bottom. Then you can use your ratchet to tighten them down. Now we just need to put the vacuum connectors back on. Make sure you put them back on the right spots. They may go on a little difficult, but if you want to lube them just gently with some silicone lube or something, you could do that, but it shouldn't be necessary. Then squeeze your hose clamps and push them back towards the end of the connector. 
Do the same for the other two. Once you get those vacuum connectors back on, you're done with the passenger side. Not too bad, huh? Now let's move on to the driver's side. You've probably noticed that I have a custom intake, so under your hood it may look a little different, but rest assured the stock intake shouldn't be in the way. On the driver's side, the procedure is pretty much the same, except the wastegate solenoid is attached to a bracket, which is then attached to the radiator support. So these two nuts need to come off first to give you more movement to remove the other two nuts like we did on the passenger side. So first, use your ratchet and loosen up those nuts, and then you can unscrew them with your fingers. Now you can just push the wastegate solenoid and its bracket down and towards the forward left side of the car and lift it up to get access. Loosen each of the 10 millimeter nuts with the wrench of your choice. I think the socket is a little easier than this wrench. Then unscrew them with your fingers. Again, be careful with those nuts. Don't drop them, please. Once you have those off, now the wastegate solenoid is free to come off of the bracket and you have more access to release the electrical connector. Again, just press the silver spring clip and pull the connector away. Now you have just a little more access and you can get those vacuum connectors off. Once again, just use your pliers to pull the hose clamps back and then pull off each of the lines. This one scared me a bit because it was pressurized for some reason. And since the lines all look alike, I decided to tape the first two and mark them. That way I don't mix them up later. Once you get the hoses off, your driver's side wastegate is free. Now just grab a new one and reverse the installation again. The order of how you do things isn't really important, just whatever is convenient for you. In this case, I put the nuts back on and then put the electrical connector back on. Then the vacuum lines and the hose clamps. And then you just maneuver it into the position back on the radiator bracket. Put your 10 millimeter nuts back on. Tighten them down with the ratchet. And that's all there is to it. With the plastic shroud off, you have a little more access to cleaning this part of the engine bay. So I took the opportunity to do that. Just to use some all purpose cleaner, a microfiber towel and that bristle brush and you can really get into the corners. Before you put the plastic shroud back on, be sure you haven't left any tools or parts in the crevices at the front of the engine. Go ahead and lay the shroud back into position and then just press it in firmly and it will clip right into place. Next, put the plastic retainers back in. Make sure that the center portion is popped up or is removed before pushing it in, and then push the center section in to lock it in place. Don't forget the Christmas tree retainers that go on each side by the headlights. Next, put the rubber seal back into place. Use the clips that are there, or if any clips are stuck in the plastic, you'll just need to uh, reconnect them to the rubber seal.
And then where the two seals meet, just tuck one into the other. And that's it, completing our wastegate installation. Now just make sure there are no tools or extra parts around the engine bay, there should be no leftover parts. Give it one last wipe down and then shut the hood and start the car and make sure that everything's operating as it should. Well, that's it for installing the wastegate solenoids. If you have an ATSV, boy, your job was easy. For the CTS V Sport, a little more involved. It only took about 20 minutes each side, so that's not too bad. And you can use basic hand tools. Now, if you found this helpful, please be sure to hit the like button and think about subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications when my next video comes out. You can also find me on Instagram at jet.fuel.only. Show me some pictures of your car and your successful changes of the wastegate solenoids. Thanks for watching.